Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. So, a little project today on my 2010 Triumph Bonneville. I'm gonna see if I can make my seat more comfortable. This is the stock seat. I'm not trying to redo the whole seat and make it into something different. I really just wanna to try to modify it to a degree where it's more comfortable. So I'm gonna to try to save the existing vinyl covering. The main thing is the foam underneath this, the stock foam, is just hard as a rock. So I want to try to replace it with a softer foam, that's number one. And then I want to try to kind of modify the pocket of where you sit. Now this is my first time doing this, so maybe I'll come to regret it. Uh, but the cost of materials to, for the foam and some of the other things, the tools and stuff you need, is not very high. A new seat done by a professional, you're going to pay six to $800, maybe more. Uh, the cost of materials here is, I'll call it 100 hours, maybe less. Now, one of the primary difficulties in doing this yourself is sourcing the foam. You need a certain density, a certain type of foam, and it could be confusing, and there's not that many companies that'll sell it to you. So uh, I settled on, on this company here. I'll, I'll link to it in the comment section. And they sell kind of standard sizes. I have enough foam here for two bikes, and I wasn't exactly sure what I needed, so I did buy you know additional foam than I really need. But one of the helpful things that they provided was a chart which showed, um, you know, the firmness of the cushion versus your weight and the thickness of the cushion. So you can see I ordered uh, different cushions here. They're all 16 by 37, uh, but different, you know, I got extra soft, I got soft, I got medium soft, and different um, thicknesses because I wasn't really sure what I need. Now when you open up the box, you see it's packaged well, and so there's different thicknesses that I purchase in different weights. This foam, when you, I mean, it's, it's definitely much softer than the stock foam. Um, you know, it's sort of got a memory foam feel to it. So if I push in, you know, it comes back, but it comes back slowly. Now, as far as tools and, and other materials that you'll need besides the foam, um, let me just go through what I've purchased here and what I already had. So I did get an electric carving knife, which is often recommended to cut the foam. Um, and I, I don't know if this particular brand is any good, we'll find out. You do need some way to kind of fine tune the foam when you get down to where you need to be. I'm not 100% sure, this is kind of a, a file or a rasp um, that's used by a lot of people. I'm not 100% sure this will work with this particular foam, it may or may not, we'll find out. Um, another option is to use a grinder uh, with a sanding wheel on it. Um, so I already have a grinder, so we can uh, try that potentially. And then you need some way to staple the uh, vinyl cover back on once you take it off. Now you do not need this. Uh, I run a construction company, so I'll have other use for this. So I bought an air powered uh, stapler, um, but you don't need that. You could just use you know, a regular old fashioned stapler like this. The other things we're gonna need are some kind of adhesive to you know, put the new foam with the old foam. And I picked this particular brand, we'll see if it works well. And then it's nice to be able to cover the foam with a kind of plastic. Now what I'm using here is uh, actually intended uh, in the construction field to cover carpeting when you're doing you know, remodels and things like that. So it's a self-adhesive plastic. It's fairly thin, but it has adhesive on one side. It's, it's pretty tenacious. Now with the seat off, I thought before I do anything, I'm just gonna mark some of the positions of the existing cover, which may help me realign it later. So I just have a silver Sharpie here. It's not really super critical. I just want to make some marks so I can find where I am later. This particular seat has this big strap here, which I'm going to take off first and get out of the way. Now to remove the cover, obviously you got to get all these staples out. Uh, these are stainless steel staples, by the way, and I'm just going to use a screwdriver I have some needle nose pliers if I need them. And I'm just gonna be careful to kind of work my way under them without destroying the uh, cover itself. These look like, uh, actually, uh, they're kind of in between 3 16 and quarter inch. Maybe that's a metric measurement. Okay, I've removed all the staples except in the very back here. I left some in for now. So I can just kind of flip the cover over and I can remove those later if I need to. I'm probably not going to even modify the back, but I'm not sure yet. So now I should be able to peel back this 
cover and we'll see what's underneath. Okay. So there is some glue here, it's sticky here. So just to give you a view of the underneath, there is some kind of foam padding there under the vinyl and a cut, I'm not sure you can see this, but there's kind of a, a mesh material just to keep it all together. It's pretty well done actually. So I have this cover peeled back. It's still attached, but it's peeled completely off. And this foam, um, it appears to be, it's kind of weird. I thought it would be glued to the pan, but you can actually lift it right up off the pan. So look, this isn't even, you know, it's not even glued in place. Here's the pan and <laughs> this whole foam area that you're looking at it upside down now um, is just obviously formed in place and then wrapped in this plastic. So in a way, because of the shape of this pan, you know, it's irregular, I almost have to use uh, the factory foam as a base. So I think I'm going to take that plastic off, put it back on, and I'm just going to cut out an area here to apply new foam. All right, with the seat back on the bike, I sat on it and just took a Sharpie and marked where my rear end ends up and where the edge of my legs ends up. So I have a better idea when I go to change this where I'm actually sitting. And you can see the pocket is actually located, you know, an inch or two back from where I typically sit. And that's been part of my problem. Okay, it's pretty easy to see why this is so uncomfortable. Uh, when I take out this section here, a sixteenth of an inch right here, there's just no padding. And so whether this is soft or not, there's just not a lot of padding here. So I cut out this little section here, which is where my rear end is. And I'm going to smooth this out a little bit. And then I'm going to fit a new piece in here. And then I can start working on shaping it the way I like. But you really can't, you know, just cut out a whole section willy-nilly because if you look underneath, you know, it's all molded to that pan. We'll try this cheap rasp. Um, it actually cuts uh, in this direction, which is not helpful to me, so I'll turn it around like this and use it like that. It does work. Uh, you know, it's not an aggressive cut, really, if you, if you don't press too hard. And I, I don't want to be aggressive. If it takes me another few minutes to get it right, that's fine. All right, this rasp is working just fine. I don't have any problems with it. But just for the sake of argument, um, I will try a grinding wheel with a uh, actually somewhat used sanding disc on it, so it's not too aggressive. Now, it's very light touch with this. Um, and I know it's going to spray stuff all over, so I'm not going to do too much camera time with this. Uh, but just to show you and see if it works, let's give it a shot. Yeah, that actually works really well. Um, that little dirt there is just some old rust that was on the uh, sanding disc. But it leaves a smoother finish than the rasp. So I think what I'll probably do is use the rasp to get the bulk of it. And then just to smooth these edges, I may use that uh, sanding wheel. Okay, next thing I need to do is to cut out... A piece of the new foam and I can use this old piece as a rough template. Okay I had to move the camera back a little bit. This stuff does make a mess. So on this replacement foam I found that the grinder worked better 
uh, it just responded better. Now this is, I think, more of a memory foam, and it just doesn't grind away as easily. You can use the rasp, but it's just, it doesn't, it's not as effective. This scoop here, you could choose to try to duplicate this scoop exactly, um, and then, you know, on this and then fit it in. I didn't try to do that. I, I did, there's a slight curve to this, so I did get some of it, but I'm also just gonna press it in place and just allow the adhesive to hold it in place. So kind of a compromise. Once this thing sets up, now I'm just going to take my knife and cut at an angle, kind of duplicate this angle, get close, but not too close. And then it's a matter of shaping it with my rasp, potentially, but probably the grinder. Okay, I'm about 90% there. It's actually going pretty easy. Uh, for this particular foam, the blue foam, this uh, grinder works best. It does make a mess. It sprays the stuff everywhere, but it, it, it goes quick and it just makes a nice smooth finish. So I'm not quite there yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. When I sat on it, the foam is definitely much softer. So it makes a difference even with nothing else. Now, one other decision I got to make is I did purchase some foam that's only a half inch thick and it's extra soft, and I could choose to cover this entire thing with that, and that might smooth the edges out here or whatever. I'm not convinced that's a great idea yet, so I'll probably just put it on the bike, sit on it, see if it makes any difference. Okay, I think that's about it. Uh, I sat on it, I'm pretty happy with it. There's a few very minor bumps here I might work on, but it's pretty much done. Okay, I lied. Uh, <laughs> after trying this half inch foam on top of what I've already done, now this is extra soft, and it, I mean it's very thin, it doesn't really add that much at all, but it does make a difference. So I think what I'm going to do, maybe I'll regret it, but I mean right now it's really good. I really have no complaints, but I'm going to try to get greedy and do one more layer. Okay, I use quarter inch stainless steel T50 staples. 
And like I said, I use this gun here, but you don't have to. I mean, you could use anything. Uh, it all lined up pretty well. And you, you can see there's a bigger hump here than there was originally. Uh, and that, when I push down at all, just sinks down lovely. It's going to be nice and soft, I think. But as far as alignment, it all looks pretty good. Uh, the staples all look good. So I'll just put that strap back on that goes across here. Then we'll put it on the bike and see how it works. All right, that's it all back together. And man, it is much, much better. You really can't see a visual difference. There's just a slight, slight hump here that you didn't see before in this section right here. And what happens is as soon as you sit on it, it just sinks down plush. Nice. Um, the other phone that was there before, you know, you would sit on it, basically nothing would happen because it was solid as a rock. Now, you know, I didn't touch the uh, passenger area up here. So when you sit here, it feels rock. When you sit here, it's just plush. It sinks down, but not too much. Uh, it's just right. I'm, I'm really quite pleased with it. And I don't know why I didn't do this before. So I would say if you want to try this yourself, it's really not that difficult. Take your time, sneak up on uh, the pocket that you're trying to create here. Don't try to do it all at once. Just kind of sneak up on it. And if you do carry a pillion, uh, you might want to consider making it a little softer for them too. Very pleased with the whole situation and um, I would encourage you to try it yourself.